Founder fans, Jason here, and today we'll be discussing Nicholas Biddle and the explosion of his ship, the Randolph. Now I'd like to give a quick shout out to Janet, one of our viewers who I've been corresponding with the last few days regarding the Biddle family, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But as for now, Nicholas Biddle was just 13 years old when he decided to go to sea. And go to sea he did, and he learned the ways of the ocean. To the point where while he was still in his teens, he actually joined the Constantine Phipps journey to the Arctic Circle. Now, Constantine Phipps would remain a loyalist. He was a British person. But his journey to the Arctic Circle was one of the first times people tried to visit Antarctica. And it was immensely important for scientific and navigational purposes. And it's kind of shocking that it's not better known. But young Nicholas Biddle learned quite a, quite a good amount about seafaring from this journey. And when he returned to the United States, it wasn't the United States yet, it was still colonies, and they had started to rebel. So, young Biddle decided, hey, I'm going to sign up for the Continental Navy, because they had just decided to create it. And he was there just in time, because when they created the Continental Navy, Nicholas Biddle was one of the first five captains. He was given a ship, which was named the Andrew Doria, and he had a lot of success pretty quickly. Uh, Biddle would go up the coast, and he went up towards Canada and captured several British ships uh, off the coast of Newfoundland. And that's how he made his name. He returned with these prizes, and the Continental Army said, Great! We just built another ship. It's even bigger, and it's even better. Here you go. And that ship was called the Randolph. Now, the Randolph family of Virginia had several members that were important. Um, I'm not certain who it was named after. I would assume it was named after uh, Edmund Randolph, who at this point... I'm sorry, Peyton Randolph, who at this point was already in the Continental Congress, as opposed to his uh, nephew, Edmund Randolph, who would later be Governor of Virginia and Attorney General. Anyway, he had a ship called the Randolph, and off he went. Now, naval captains for the Continental Navy had a lot of freedoms. They were usually given one instruction, and after you do this, go do whatever you want. Just try and help out as best you can. So Nicholas Biddle was told, go try and run the, brigade, the uh, blockade of British ships off South Carolina, try and scare them away. So he did this. He went to South Carolina, and there were no British ships. <laughs> so he decided to go to the West Indies. He said there's trade there. A lot of uh, supplies were coming in for the Continental Army from the islands in the Caribbean. And he said, I'm going to go make sure these merchant ships make it. So he did. And while he was off the coast of Barbados, he ran into a bigger, badder British ship called the Yarmouth. Yarmouth. I'm sorry, Yarmouth. Uh, and he decided to attack the Yarmouth, which, okay, good luck. And he actually seemed to have been getting the upper hand. He was actually beating this bigger uh, British ship that had better trained sailors for the most part. Um, but Biddle was then shot. And seconds after he was shot, a ball from a British cannon struck the powder supply in the Randolph, and the ship exploded. And Nicholas Biddle was one of 301 sailors that died that day in the explosion. Now, how do we know he was shot? If he got shot and the boat exploded right away? There were four survivors, and they clung to a piece of wreckage for about a week. And before they starved to death, fortunately for them, they were found. Who were they found by? Well, the very same British ship, the Yarmouth, that had blown up the Randolph in the first place. So, that's the story of Nicholas Biddle. Unfortunately, he was just 27 years old when he passed away, but he had made quite a mark. And not many 27-year-olds were leading, were captains of ships at the time. You usually had to work for a very long time to get there. And, to be fair... Biddle did work for a very long time to get there. He just started at 13 years old. I do want to add one side note. Um, Nicholas Biddle is a name that you might recognize if you're a history nerd, uh, but not for this reason. His ne ne this Nicholas Biddle that we're discussing today, his nephew was also named Nicholas Biddle, and he would go on to be in charge of the banks when Andrew Jackson was president. And when Andrew Jackson had his famous bank wars... Uh, regarding the insti institution, the creation of the second national bank of the United States, 
Nicholas Biddle was the enemy of Andrew Jackson, and they went at it for a while. So if you did think you recognized the name, but not from the American Revolution, that's where you would have heard it from. Um, anyway, I want to say thank you to Janet for recommending I do I cover a Biddle. Uh, I have written on several Biddles in the link below. There'll be a link to the article that I wrote on Nicholas, as always. Um, I am going to write about Rebecca Biddle, who was a sister-in-law, if I'm not mistaken, of Nicholas Biddle. Thank you to uh, Janet's recommendation. And that means I will be discussing her this Saturday when I do my 3 o'clock Week in Review, where we go back and look at my articles from this past week. So if you are not subscribed to this channel, if you're new here and just signed in, I make videos five days a week, plus a live one on Saturday. It's a lot of fun. Please hit subscribe. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video. You've made it almost six minutes. I'm assuming you liked it. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to bringing you another video tomorrow.